let's get started on Chapter 8, Virtual Machine Storage. In this chapter, we will discuss virtual hard disks, creating a virtual hard disk, virtual hard disk formats, creating a virtual hard disk using PowerShell, adding a virtual hard disk to a virtual machine, creating differencing disks, and creating a new virtual machine using a differencing disk. We will look at pass-through disks, editing a virtual hard disk, mounting a virtual hard disk, creating snapshots, which are also called checkpoints, storage area networks, and storage area network technologies. Let's start out with a review of virtual hard disks from Windows 7. A virtual hard disk is a single file which appears as a physical hard disk. So let's look at an example of when a virtual hard disk would be useful. And one example would be if you are transferring files using email. You could attach a single file to an email. That's easy enough. You go into your email program and you set, select attach and uh, and then you select the file that you want to attach to the email. And if you want to attach a large number of files, you could select file 1, file 2, file 3, file 4. But what if you wanted to select all of the files on the D drive, all of the files under the accounting folder, under the bookkeeping folder? What if I wanted to select all of the files and all of the folders on the D drive. If I wanted to select the entire contents of the drive, all files and folders included, well, I could click on each individual file, but that would be awfully time consuming. It would be impractical. This is why we use virtual hard disks, or this is one reason for using virtual hard disks. A virtual hard disk contains the entire contents of a hard disk, files and folders included, but it is saved as a single file. And that single file can be sent via email as one big file attachment. Now let's look at creating a virtual hard disk in Windows 7, and then we will look at creating a virtual hard disk in Windows Server 2012. To create the virtual hard disk, we click on Start, right-click on Computer, select Manage, and we go to the Computer Management Console. Then under Storage, we select the Disk Management Snap-in. We right-click on the Disk Management Snap-in and select Create Virtual Hard Disk. Then we specify the location of the virtual hard disk. I will click on Browse, and we will store this virtual hard disk on the root of the C drive. And I will name this virtual hard disk Win7.VHD. That's the extension, .VHD, for virtual hard disk. And then I will specify the size of the virtual hard disk. In this case, I will make it 20 gig in size. And then I click on OK. And then now we can see the new virtual hard disk. And you might say, it doesn't look like a file to me. It looks like a hard disk to me. Well, a virtual hard disk is really a file, but it looks like a hard disk. Now, we can see that this virtual hard disk is not initialized. And whenever you put in a new physical hard disk, or whenever you put in a new virtual hard disk, you have to initialize it. So we right click and select initialize disk. We will select the partition style of MBR master boot record because I do not plan to make this partition larger than two terabytes. Then I will click on OK. So now what we have is a 20 gig disk and it's online and it has 20 gig of free space. So then the next logical thing to do would be to right click on that free space and, and create a new simple volume. And at the new simple volume wizard, I click on next 
and I will use all available space to create this new simple volume. Then I'll click on Next. It gets assigned the next available drive letter, and in this case it is drive letter I. Then I click on Next, and I will format it as NTFS. And at this point you might say, this sure does look like a hard disk to me. It does look like a hard disk, but it is a virtual hard disk, because although we treat it as a hard disk, we can transport it as a single file. I will format it as NTFS, click on Next, and then when I click on Finish, we can now see that a new volume has been created on that virtual hard disk, and it is the I drive. After we create the virtual hard disk, we can then copy files and folders to the virtual hard disk and then send the virtual hard disk as a single file in an email attachment. And although that email attachment will be a single file, when the user receives it, it will contain all the folders and all the files in that virtual hard disk. We see here is the, the D drive which had the accounting folder. And what I have done is I have copied the accounting folder from the physical D drive to the I drive, which is the virtual hard disk. But it looks like a physical hard disk. So you can see there are quite a number of folders and quite a number of files on this virtual hard disk. Let's now view the virtual hard disk file. The virtual hard disk file, as you recall, is on the root of the C drive. And we called it win7.vhd for virtual hard disk, and we can see that it is 20 gig in size. After creating files and folders to the virtual hard disk, then we can send the VHD file as a single email attachment. And when the user opens it at the other end and mounts it as a volume, then that user will see all the files and all the folders in that virtual hard disk. So, to summarize our review of a virtual hard disk, a virtual hard disk is a single file which is stored on a physical hard disk, but it appears as a physical hard disk. A virtual hard disk is a single file which appears as a physical hard disk. Now, let's look at virtual hard disks in the context of server virtualization. In server virtualization, we have one big host computer with one big hard disk. And many virtual machines run on that one big host computer. And each virtual machine contains an operating system which requires its own hard disk. But instead of giving it, giving it a physical hard disk, each virtual machine is assigned a virtual hard disk. And as you know, a virtual hard disk is a file which appears appears as a hard disk to the operating system which is installed in the virtual machine. Two methods of creating virtual hard disks. You can create a virtual hard disk when you create the virtual machine, and we already did that in Chapter 7, or you can create the virtual hard disk separately from the virtual machine. Let's examine the virtual hard disk file which was created when we created the virtual machine in the previous chapter. If we go to the Windows, if we go to the Windows Explorer, I go to the C drive, and under the C drive, there's a folder called um, public under users called public, and there's public documents, Hyper-V, and there's a folder called virtual hard disks. And these are the virtual hard disks that go with the virtual machines which are running on this computer. Notice the virtual hard disk has the same name as the virtual machine that it is associated with. Creating a new virtual hard drive. Let's create a new virtual hard drive but not attach it to a virtual machine. We will see that we can attach it later. To create a new virtual hard drive, we select the physical server under Hyper-V Manager. I right-click, select New, and select Hard Disk. The 
new virtual hard disk wizard tells us that it helps us to create a new virtual hard disk. Virtual hard disks provide storage for virtual machines and are stored on physical media as .vhd or .vhdx files. And we click on next. And then we select the virtual hard disk format. We could select a .vhd format and that's been around for a while and that supports virtual hard disks up to two terabytes in size and that is sufficient for most virtual machines. However, if we need a larger virtual hard disk, larger than two terabytes, then we select the VHDX virtual hard disk format. The VHDX format supports virtual hard disks greater than two terabytes and up to 64 terabytes. However, it is not supported by operating systems earlier than Windows Server 2012. In this example, I will just select VHD because, as I said, I don't need a, a, a virtual hard disk larger than 2 gig in size. Then I click on Next. Then the wizard says, what type of virtual hard disk do you want to create? You could select a fixed size. So if you create a 40 gig hard disk, the file will be 40 gig. But another way to go is to select a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk. And the advantage of a dynamically, dynamically expanding virtual hard disk is that it really doesn't take up any space or doesn't take up much space on the physical hard disk until data is actually written to it. So it's a good way to save space on the physical hard disk. So I will select dynamically expanding, then click on next. The uh, differencing disk, we'll talk about that later. Specify the name and the location of the virtual hard disk file. We will save it in the default location under Hyper-V under virtual hard disks, and I will simply name this virtual hard disk VHD1. Click on next. Then I will specify the size of the virtual hard disk, and in this case, I will make it 60 gig in size, followed by next. Then we see that we have successfully completed the new virtual hard disk wizard. We will create a new virtual hard disk, which is a VHD format, dynamically expanding. The name will be, the name of it will be VHD1-VHD. The location will be under Hyper-V virtual hard disks, and the size or maximum size will be 60 gig, and I click on finish. And that creates the new virtual hard disk. Now let's take a look at that. If I go to the Windows Explorer, and I go under the C drive, down to the Hyper-V, down to the virtual hard disk folder, I can see there's the new virtual hard disk that I just created, VHD1.VHD, and notice it's only 128 kilobytes in size, and the reason it's so small is because it has not yet been written to. That's the advantage of the dynamically expanding disk. If I look at properties, I can see the format is .VHD. The type is dynamically expanding. The location is under Hyper-V virtual hard disks. There's the file name. The current file size, only 128, and the maximum size is 60 gig. Now that we have created the virtual hard disk, now let's add the virtual hard disk to a virtual machine. In this example, I will select File Server 1, which is a virtual machine. I will right-click on File Server 1, select Settings, and under Hardware, under IDE Controller, you can see it already has one virtual hard disk associated with it. On the right side, I will select hard disk followed by add. And then I will select the radio button that says vir virtual hard disk. Click on browse and I will scroll down to the C drive way down to the Hyper-V virtual hard disks folder and select that new virtual hard disk there I created virtual hard disk one. Click on open. So now what I've done is I have added a second virtual hard disk to File Server 1, which is a virtual machine. 
mounting a virtual hard drive. After we have attached the virtual hard disk to the virtual machine, which is what we just did, then we mount the virtual hard disk in the guest operating system, which is installed in the virtual machine. So we go to the virtual machine and we go to the disk management snap in in the computer management console. I go to file server one, which is my virtual machine, right click and select connect. And then under tools, I select computer management. And now I'm looking at the computer management console within file server one, which is a virtual machine. If I go to disk management, we can see that a new virtual hard disk has been added. In fact, it looks like a new physical hard disk has been added. And since it's new, it's not initialized. So what we have to do, as we have already discussed, is to initialize it. We right click on it and we select initialize disk. The partition style in this case I will select will be MBR master boot record followed by OK. And now you can see we have the new disk and there is the unallocated space and of course the next logical thing to do would be to right click, select new simple volume and to create a new volume on that new virtual disk. We've already done that so I will skip that step. Creating a virtual hard disk. First we create the virtual hard disk then we attach it to the virtual machine. Then we mount it in the guest operating system which is installed in the virtual machine. We go to the disk management snap-in in the computer management console. We initialize the disk just as if it were a physical disk and then we create the volume. Let's look at creating a virtual hard disk using PowerShell. To start PowerShell we go to the blue greater than sign at the bottom and we are now at the PowerShell command prompt and the command that I type is new dash VHD dash path C colon backslash VHD one dot VHDX dash dynamic space dash size byte space 40 GB. So what this command says is we are creating a new virtual hard disk that's located on the C drive. That's the name of the virtual hard disk. It'll be dynamically expanding and the maximum size will be 40 gig. I press the enter key and now we can see that the new virtual hard drive has been created and then we can mount it to a virtual machine. Let's now discuss differencing disks. Differencing disks are used when you want to create a clone of a virtual machine. I've got a file server, file server one, it's set up just the way I want and I want a whole bunch of other file servers just like it. That's what differencing disks are for. We start out with a master disk and the master disk contains the operating system and it's configured just the way you want it. And what we want to do is we want to create new virtual machines based upon the master. And the new, the vir new virtual machines are based upon the net master and the differences between the virtual machines are stored on the differencing disk. So let's create a master disk. To create a master disk, you have to run sysprep on the master disk, or, or just call it, if you don't want to call it the master disk, just call it on the virtual machine that you want to clone. Run sysprep on the virtual machine that you want to clone. And sysprep is a Microsoft command that's been around for a long time. And what it's used to do is to strip out variables which must be unique, such as computer name and security identifier because remember a clone is it's it's almost an identical copy so I want an almost identical copy of file server one but I can't have two file servers with the same name so sysprep strips out the variables which must be unique such as computer name and security identifier I will go to the machine that I want to clone which is file server one and I will right click and I will select connect then to go to the command prompt I will type CMD and at the command prompt I will go to the Windows System32 sysprep folder and I will type sysprep and press the enter key. And what sysprep is going to do is strip out the variables which must be unique such as computer name and security identifier. Notice under sysprep system preparation tool prepares the machine for hardware independence and cleanup. 
I select the checkbox that says generalized, followed by OK, and it sys preps the disk, and then it shuts that machine down. Now let's look at creating differencing disks. What I do is I go back to the machine that I just sys prepped, the one I want to clone, File Server 1, and I put my cursor on the physical server. I put my cursor on the physical server, right click and select new followed by hard disk. This is the new virtual hard disk wizard which helps us to create a new virtual hard disk. Click on next. What format do we want to use? VHD or VHDX and as you know VHDX supports partitions above 2 terabytes up to 64 terabytes. Click on next. Now we already discussed what fixed size is and that dynamic expanding saves space on the disk, but we are going to select differencing disk. And note under differencing disk, this type of disk is associated in a parent-child relationship with another disk that you want to leave intact. I click on next. Then we specify the name and location of the virtual hard disk file and I will call the differencing disk simply diff disk 1 followed by next. Then we specify the virtual hard disk that you want to use as the parent for this differencing disk. In other words, the, the clone, the computer rather that will be cloned. I click on browse and uh, under Hyper-V, under virtual hard disks, I select the virtual hard disk associated with file server 1. I click on open then I click on next. Then it says you have successfully completed the new virtual hard disk wizard. I click on finish and it creates the new differencing disk. Now I create the new virtual machine using the difference in disk. In other words, I am going to create the clone. I go to um, my physical server, right click and select new followed by virtual machine. Then I give the virtual machine a name such as file server 6. I click on next. I specify the amount of RAM that I want to assign to that virtual machine followed by next. Then I will assign it to a virtual switch followed by next. And then under virtual hard disk. I will not select create a virtual hard disk. I will select use an existing virtual hard disk. I will then click on browse and then I will go to the folder which contains Hyper-V and the virtual hard disks and I will select the virtual hard disk which I created. The one which is a clone of file server 1. Then I click on open click on next and the completing new virtual machine wizard indicates that we're going to create a new file server file server 6 based on this differencing disk and we click on finish and then that creates file server 6 which is nearly identical to file server 1 except if we go and look at the name we'll see we will see that the name is a randomly generated name and then we have to go in and assign it a name. Differencing disks are used to create clones of virtual machines and that clone includes the operating system which is in the virtual machine. Pass-through disks. Typically you don't use pass-through disks. Typically the virtual machine stores data to the virtual hard disk which is a file which is located on the physical hard disk. An exception would be a pass-through disk. A pass-through disk allows a virtual machine direct access to the physical hard disk that bypasses the virtual hard disk process. This is the exception. You typically don't use pass-through disks. You would only do it in unique cases. Editing a virtual hard disk. If we go to technet.microsoft.com under editing a, editing a virtual hard disk, we see that we have several actions, compact, convert, 
expand. If we select the option for compact, what that does is it reduces the size of the virtual hard disk file by removing blank space that is left behind. And what that does is it frees up space on the physical hard disk, leaves more room for other virtual hard disk. That's, that's one option. Or we could select convert, and convert converts a dynamically expanding virtual hard disk to a fixed virtual hard disk or vice versa, or we can use it to simply expand the size of the virtual hard disk, or we could also use it to shrink the virtual hard disk. I will go to uh, file server one and, uh, sorry, I will go to the right under edit disk. And then under edit disk, we have the edit virtual disk wizard. This helps us to edit a virtual disk. We click on next. Where is the virtual disk file located? Well, it's where they all located under Hyper-V virtual hard disks folder. And this is the virtual hard disk that I want to edit, that I want to modify it. So I will select uh, the virtual hard disk file from file server 2. I select that, click on next. Then it says, what do you want to do to this virtual hard disk? How do you want to edit it? You can compact it, you can convert it, you can expand it, you can shrink it. If you compact it, it makes the virtual hard disk file smaller, frees up space on the physical hard disk. You can select convert, that converts it from a dynamically expanding disk um, to a fixed disk. You can expand the size of the virtual hard disk or you can shrink it. In this example, I will select convert. Then I click on next. And when I convert, I can convert, can convert to a VHD to VHDX file because I need that virtual hard disk to be larger than two terabytes in size. Next. Or I could convert it from a fixed size to a dynamically expanding disk. I guess maybe I should say not or, but and. I do and or. Followed by next. Then I select the name and the location for the virtual disk, click on Browse, and I select the virtual disk that I want to convert, click on Save, click on Next, and it says completing the Edit Virtual Hard Disk Wizard, and it shows that we have converted it. So you can convert it from fixed to dynamically expanding, or vice versa, or you could uh, convert it from VHD to VHDX and I click on finish. Now let's move on to discuss creating snapshots and snapshots are also called checkpoints and a snapshot allows you to roll back to a previous point in time. In other words if you really screw something up you can roll back to before where you screwed it up uh, assuming that you have created a snapshot. So to create a snapshot, all you have to do is select the virtual machine, right click on it, click on snapshot, and that's it. And that creates a snapshot. And then um, if, I, uh, if, I, if I screw something up, I can roll it back to that snapshot. Typically you should take multiple snapshots. You should typically take a snapshot after you have done a clean install of the operating system and then before you install any major service packs and before making any major configuration changes. So if you install a piece of software that screws things up and makes things worse, you can just roll it back to a previous point in time. When you apply a snapshot, you are rolling back the entire virtual hard disk to a previous point in time. So if we look at this example, we can see the snapshots, which they call checkpoints right here. Here are multiple snapshots that have been made when there was a clean installation, uh, before I installed a service pack, before I installed additional software. And if I want to roll it back to a previous point in time, I right click and I select apply. And it says, are you sure? And I click on apply and it rolls it back to that point in time. Snapshots, very convenient. A snapshot, also known as a checkpoint, allows us to roll back to a previous 
point in time. Good idea to make a snapshot before you make any system changes. Now let's discuss SANS, storage area networks. But before we discuss storage area networks, let's review what's meant by traditional storage. In traditional storage, users at workstations connect to a switch, which connects to a switch in the server room, and that connects to all the servers in the server room. And in traditional storage, the hard disks were, were stored inside of the servers, and that's considered inflexible. Here's why. If, if I want two, I have a, a two terabyte hard disks, disks, two one terabyte hard disks in each server, and if I want two terabytes in each server, that's great. But, but suppose I only want to have um, a half a terabyte in this server, and suppose I want to have three and a half terabytes in this server. Well, I guess I could turn the servers off and pull one hard disk out of this server and move it to the other server, but I really couldn't take out a saw and cut the hard disk in half and move it to the other server. The point is, in the traditional storage method, it is, it's not easy to reallocate storage capacity to different servers. The solution is to create a storage area network. With a storage area network, you get an external disk array, which is often called a RAID array, and you connect the disk array to the servers with a switch. And then the disks don't go in the servers, the disks are stored in the disk array. And this is what we call a storage area network. The storage area network is within the server room. It's not a very large area. Now let's not confuse it with this with the local area network. The local area network is where the users are and that connects the users to the server room and a local area network could be a, a couple hundred meters from one end to the other. But a storage area network is typically contained within the server room. Storage area network is where the disk array connects to the servers by way of a switch. And then we allocate disk space to the servers. For example, we could allocate three disks. We could allocate three terabytes of storage to the first server. We could allocate one terabyte of storage to the second server, and we could allocate a half a terabyte of storage to the third server, or we could allocate three and a half terabytes of storage to the first server. This is the advantage of using a storage area network. In a storage area network, the disks are not in the servers. We get an external disk array. And the servers are connected to the disk array by way of a switch, and different amounts of disk space are allocated to the servers as needed. And then the virtual machines, which are on the servers, save data to the virtual hard disks, which are on the disk array. And this results in a more efficient utilization of resources. In a larger storage area network, you might have many hosts and many disk arrays. Storage area technologies refers to the hardware which is used to connect the host computers to the disk array. Fiber channel is one way to go, and another way to go is iSCSI. Fiber channel is where we use fiber optic cable, fiber optic adapters and fiber optic switches to connect the host computers to the disk array. And fiber channel is great because it's real fast, but it ain't cheap. In fact, it's real expensive. A more economical way to go is iSCSI. iSCSI uses standard gigabit ethernet switches and standard gigabit network interface cards to connect the host computers to the disk arrays. And it's not as fast as fiber optic, but there is significantly lower cost. A storage area network is where virtual machines, which are located in the host computers, save data to virtual hard disks, which are files, which are located on physical hard disks, which are located within the disk array. Chapter 8, Summary. In this chapter, we discussed virtual hard disks, creating a virtual hard disk, virtual hard disk formats, 
created a virtual hard disk using PowerShell, adding a virtual hard disk to a virtual machine, creating differencing disks, and creating a new virtual machine using a differencing disk. We looked at pass-through disks, editing a virtual hard disk, mounting a virtual hard disk, creating snapshots, which they also call checkpoints, storage area networks, and storage area network technologies. And this concludes Chapter 8. Thank you very much, and have a